From the late 90s through the early 2000s, Lindsay Lohan's star burned bright. But was it too bright? From Disney star to Jailbird, Lohan has persevered through it all to begin her latest journey, motherhood. The public knows a lot about Lindsay Lohan's family dynamics and all of her family members, and it hasn't always been painted in the best light. While Lohan's three siblings have lived relatively quiet lives, Lohan's parents have been the source of plenty of drama over the years. Her mother, Dina, has had her own thirst for fame, and her father, Michael, has dealt with a number of legal struggles and a penchant for violence. While the Lohan clan is at a rather peaceful point nowadays, that was anything but the case in the past. Earlier in Lohan's life, things were incredibly tumultuous due to Michael's drug use and criminal activities. As Lohan told Vanity Fair in 2006, he'd spent time in and out of jail throughout her entire life. Inevitably, we are responsible for what Lindsay, the, the path that Lindsay took. Things got especially messy after Lohan's parents separated when she was three and her father kidnapped her out of a courtroom. Though Michael denies it, he has also been accused of being physically and sexually abusive toward Dina and of threatening to kill his family, and he spent many extended periods out of their house binging drugs. Lohan documented her complex relationship with Michael in her 2005 song, Confessions of a Broken Heart, Daughter to Father. It might feel like Lindsay Lohan has been famous her entire life, but she didn't really break out until The Parent Trap came out in 1998. She was 12 when the film was released, and in comparison to some other child actors, that's a pretty late jumping-off point. While she may not have been well-known until that point, that's not to say she wasn't working already. Before filming The Parent Trap, she'd been in the entertainment business for years, performing as both a model and actor. She appeared in print campaigns for designers like Tommy Hilfiger and Calvin Klein, and appeared in over 60 commercials for the likes of Jell-O, Duncan Hines, and the board game Payday. Lohan also racked up a handful of TV credits before her feature debut, most notably seven episodes of Another World in 1996 and 1997. Lohan had to audition for The Parent Trap, but once the film made her a star, the opportunities became so plentiful that she decided she would no longer audition for parts. As she explained to Variety in 2019, I would be terrified to audition. I don't even know what it would be like. I think I would freeze. My agent asked me to read for something and I was like, I can't. I would panic. It's such a different experience, I don't think I could do it. While the teenage years can be tough for many, in Lohan's case, the glare of the spotlight and the responsibility of working at such a young age only added to the stress of being a young person. Since both her parents seemed to want to be famous themselves, Lohan had an especially complicated upbringing as a child star, dealing with her own media scrutiny and her parents' frequent ploys for attention. Lohan's mother did more interviews than possibly any other celebrity mother in history, and she even convinced E! to give her a reality show, Living Lohan, which lasted for one season. Lohan's father was no stranger to giving interviews either, and there was ample interest in him due to his frequent arrests. All of this tabloid attention was tough on Lohan, who had to switch schools at one point due to the negative press. She also missed a lot of school, including a full eight months while she was away filming The Parent Trap. Being away so long would certainly have an impact on any young person's social life, and Lohan's fame and family drama led to bullying from her classmates. For this reason, Lohan left traditional schooling in the 11th grade, opting to be homeschooled instead. This also allowed her more freedom as she was able to attend school and be on set at the same time. Somewhat ironically, this is what she did on the set of Mean Girls while playing the role of a student in the exact opposite situation. I'm 16, and until today, I was homeschooled. Lohan has struggled with a number of health issues over the years, from her substance addiction to her eating disorder to plain exhaustion. However, all of these issues have been underscored by Lohan's chronic illness, the asthma she has suffered from since she was two years old. There are multiple instances of Lohan being taken to the hospital because of an asthma attack. At times, however, asthma has also been used as an excuse to hide her other health issues, such as when Lohan was hospitalized during the shooting of Herbie fully loaded with a swollen liver and a kidney infection. In 2006, her mother refused to acknowledge her daughter's eating disorder. Even as Lohan herself opened up about having been bulimic, Dina told Vanity Fair, "...she was shooting Herbie in the valley in 110-degree weather with a full racing suit on, in dust and in dirt. She had an asthma attack. She was breaking up with Wilmer Valderrama. Her father was spiraling out of control at that time." Dina elaborated that Lohan was also recording an album at that time, which added to her stress. 
As for her daughter's weight loss, she attributed that to the time she spent on an IV at the hospital, rather than the effects of an eating disorder. Not too long after her hospitalization during the filming of Herbie Fully Loaded, Lohan was tapped to host Saturday Night Live. Her May 2005 appearance on the show marked her second time as host, and she has since hosted two more times, in 2006 and 2012. She got along well with the cast and crew, and due to their mutual involvement on Mean Girls, Lohan had developed a special relationship with Tina Fey. On this particular visit, Lohan's health was not in top form, and physically, she appeared frail and thin. If you read the tabloids, they say I'm too skinny, I'm at clubs every night, and I'm going out with everyone from Bruce Willis to Jake Gyllenhaal. Many at SNL expressed their concerns to the young star, including Faye and showrunner Lorne Michaels. Amy Poehler also spoke out, reportedly telling the star outright that she was too skinny. Faye and Michaels, in particular, seemed to make an impact on Lohan when they pulled her aside for a private conversation. As Lohan recalled to Vanity Fair, they sat me down, literally before I was going to do the show, and they said, you need to take care of yourself. We care about you too much, and we've seen too many people do this, and you're talented. And I just started bawling. In that same interview, Lohan said that it was when she watched herself in that episode of SNL that she noticed how fragile she looked. Whether they were real or media fabrications, Lohan had her share of celebrity rivalries with other stars. However, she also managed to maintain friendships with some actors who hit it big as kids, such as Raven Simone. The That's So Raven star even lived with Lohan for a brief period. The pair met while they were both attending a fashion shoot, and since neither was pursuing higher education, decided to get a place together to mimic the experience of having a college roommate. While doing a segment for The Drew Barrymore Show, Lohan said she remembered her time living with Simone fondly. However, Simone told Us Weekly that the pair barely even saw each other throughout the time they shared a living space. Despite these conflicting narratives, Simone came to defend her former roommate publicly years later. While on the talk show, The View, Simone spoke up against her more critical co-hosts while discussing a negative comment Jennifer Lawrence made about Lohan taking the opportunity to highlight how difficult Lohan's life had been. She has had problems in her life, from yeah. family to work. While Lindsay Lohan's mid-teens were undeniably challenging, her struggle only seemed to increase as she emerged into adulthood. Reflecting with Interview Magazine in 2022, Lohan blamed moving away from home at such a young age for her downward spiral. When asked about which decisions she would change given the opportunity, she answered, I wouldn't have moved to LA so quickly. It was a whole different world that I wasn't prepared for at my age." The years between 2007 and 2012 were some of the toughest for the actor, and for a long while it seemed like things were going to end tragically for the star. Over that particular six-year period, Lohan was in court 20 times, in rehab for 250 days, and taken to jail on six occasions. Her offenses included driving under the influence, cocaine possession, driving with a suspended license, and felony grand theft for stealing an expensive necklace. However, what got her into the most trouble were probation violations. In 2010, she even spent slightly less than two weeks in jail for not going to alcohol counseling, as instructed. In 2008, in the midst of her many troubles, Lohan sought to do some good by aiding Barack Obama's presidential campaign. She wanted to host a series of events for young voters to support Obama's first run. But insiders from his camp told the Chicago Sun-Times that Lohan's status in the public eye caused them to refuse her endorsement. Around that time, Lohan also unleashed on Sarah Palin in a passionate rant on MySpace, calling the Alaskan politician out for her small-minded views and desire for attention. In 2012, Lohan again supported Obama, but not right away. On October 12, she told reporters at an event that she was all in on Republican candidate Mitt Romney due to his stance on unemployment. However, by October 23rd, she was once again expressing support for Obama, leading many to call her out for her rapid change of heart. Presidential elections are not the only time Lohan has been political, either. She has met with the president of Turkey in his home. A 2017 visit to meet with him, his wife, and a Syrian refugee garnered attention in the press. In 2016, she also tweeted up a storm regarding Brexit, which she was vocally against. Lohan has had a number of fairly high-profile relationships throughout her career. One of her most notable romantic entanglements was her on-again, off-again relationship with DJ Samantha Ronson between 2008 and 2009. Despite there being no shortage of tabloid attention, for a long time, Lohan was reluctant to share much about the relationship or really even acknowledge it. 
While Lohan occasionally implied she was in a relationship on her social media at the time, she never made a definitive statement about having a girlfriend. Nor did she ever name Ronson as her partner. Regardless of her paramour's gender, this was not particularly strange behavior on Lohan's part. As she also told Harper's Bazaar, she did not like to label romantic relationships. Even so, because of her romantic past, fans were confused when Lohan publicly identified herself as straight in a 2013 episode of Piers Morgan Live. As she explained, I have made out with girls before, and I had a relationship with a girl, but I think I needed to experience that, and I think I was looking for something different. Lohan's hardships did not stop after her early 20s, and she rarely discusses one particular challenge she faced in the mid-2010s — her miscarriage. At the time, she was filming the reality show Lindsay, a series produced by Oprah Winfrey that followed Lohan as she attempted to regain control of her personal and professional life. The eight-episode show shadowed Lohan shortly after she left rehab for the sixth time, and featured everything from her court-mandated community service to her struggle to find acting work. Much of the focus was on Lohan's sobriety, and her sober coach appeared in half the episodes. I'm sober, but I've been very close. It has come very close. Winfrey also popped in to offer words of wisdom a few times, but Lohan and her assistant were the only people to appear in all eight episodes. Lohan was not publicly dating anyone while making the series, and she did not divulge who the father of her unborn child was. She also stopped filming for several weeks and did not explain why until after the fact. After presumably taking time to grieve in private before facing public scrutiny, she revealed the reason for her absence in the final episode of the series. Discussing her experience re-watching the footage from that time period, she explained, "...I cried so many times watching it because I don't see it as me. It's strange. It's weird." Fresh off her ill-received reality series and struggling to be taken seriously again as an actor, Lohan decided to make some big changes to her life. In 2014, she decided to move to London, where she told The Guardian she thought she had a better chance of becoming the person she wanted to be. Once out there, she made an artistic pivot, opting to appear in theater productions rather than films. Critical reception of her first theatrical performance, a role in a production of Speed the Plow, was largely positive. By all accounts, Lohan really enjoyed living in England, to the point where she initially planned to stay there permanently. According to Allure, those plans changed when she visited Dubai, a place she first went to in 2008 but had not previously considered as a home base. The city, located in the United Arab Emirates, is known for its modern buildings, lavish lifestyles, and happening nightlife. In addition to its architecture, Dubai's privacy laws also appeal to Lohan. The nation's paparazzi restrictions allow celebrities like Lohan to live a life that borders on normal. Given the amount of media scrutiny she was under at the time of her move, it's not surprising that she opted to drop anchor there indefinitely. Though Lohan still visits the United States, she has not lived there even part-time since first leaving in 2014. As she explained to Allure in 2023, "...in New York, I'm walking on the street and I hear the sound of a click and I think, was that paparazzi?" To never have to worry about that in a place where I live is a startling feeling in a way. Lohan met Russian heir Igor Tarabasov through mutual friends toward the end of 2015, and they were engaged by April of the following year. Only months into their engagement, shocking photographs of the pair having a physical altercation on a Mykonos beach were published online. Then a couple of days later, footage of a fight between the pair at Lohan's London apartment also leaked. In the video, Lohan can be heard screaming that Tarabasov had strangled her nearly to the point of death. She then proceeded to yell a number of expletives, order her fiancé out of her apartment, and threaten to spread the word about his abuse. Police were called to the scene, but Lohan did not announce a breakup until two weeks later. As she recalled to Variety, "...I was hit and abused physically on a beach in front of people twice, and then at my house, and thank God a kid saw me and called the police. It's a shame that people had to see that, but it's something that I feel is necessary to talk about." In the same interview, Lohan explained that she ultimately bought the same beach in which Tarabasov attacked her as an F you to her former partner. After buying the location, Lohan built a beach club there. Instead of crying or getting angry, I said, I'm going to own this beach one day because I always want everyone to feel safe. After purchasing the beach, Lohan opened the club Lohan's Beach House, which she then spun into a television comeback in the form of her much hyped MTV reality series Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club. Unfortunately, the series quickly flopped. Season 1 was only 12 episodes, and the reception was so terrible that the network pulled the plug after that. 
Lohan's face was front and center on all of the promotional materials, but she often took a backseat to the rest of the cast. Unfortunately, this may have proved a poor choice by production, for viewers presumably came for Lohan but were instead shown drama between unknown hospitality workers that proved less than compelling for fans. According to Page Six, there was talk that a second season might happen, which would focus less on the staff and more on Lohan, her mother, and her sister. But it never saw the light of day. Network insiders said the show was canceled because Lohan did not give them enough drama, which they blamed for the lackluster ratings and the subpar reviews. According to TMZ, by the time the show was canceled, Lohan had reportedly packed up shop in Mykonos and abandoned the club. Lohan has never had trouble finding suitors, but she hasn't always had the best luck forming long-term partnerships. She started off by dating fellow celebrities like Aaron Carter and Wilmer Valderrama, but in later years pivoted to the likes of businessmen and heirs. Some of her other exes include restaurateur Harry Morton, shipping heir Stavros Niarchos III, and hotelier Vikram Chahatwal. For longtime fans of the star, it was quite gratifying to see Lohan find her actual prince in the form of financier Vader Shamas. A fellow Dubai resident, the pair met randomly at a restaurant in 2019. Lohan and Shamas hit it off immediately, and within days of meeting him, she had already told her soon-to-be partner she thought she would spend the rest of her life with him. He has such a stillness and a calm to him, and just he's just such a wise man. The couple started dating right away, but did not get engaged until November 2021. Though Lohan kept all details under wraps at first, she started sharing more after the engagement. They married in a secret ceremony in April 2022, but didn't let the public know until July of that year, when Lohan made an Instagram post, calling Shamus her husband. Since then, Lohan and her man seemed to be going strong, and they welcomed their first child together in July 2023. The Lindsay Lohan fans once knew, stayed up late, went out all the time, and had generally unhealthy and irresponsible habits. Nowadays, she lives an extremely quiet life with a strict routine and a small circle of friends. As she explained to Allure, her mornings are particularly systematized, as she eats the same breakfast and regularly works out. As she joked to the outlet, sometimes I call it the Truman Show, because it's the same thing every day, but I love it. I really love structure because I don't think I had that when I was young. Everything was coming so fast and I had so many things happening. My only structure was filming and being on set. Beyond her morning routine, Lohan seems to have committed to health and wellness as priorities in other parts of her life as well. She cooks homemade meals for herself and her husband and, by all accounts, lives as a homebody. While speaking with Cosmopolitan in 2022, Lohan said she goes to bed at 9.30 p.m. and gets seven or eight hours of sleep nightly. However, that may have changed since she had her baby. Having reached fame as a preteen, Lohan has had a lot of practice with interviews. But while the star has likely sat with thousands of print and television reporters, she has rarely been the one asking the questions. When she started a podcast in 2022, she took on the role of interviewer for the first time. She first announced The Lowdown with Lindsay Lohan in late 2021 and recorded the first episode in April 2022. She told Forbes she was excited to have an outlet to be authentically herself, without the interference of journalists, paparazzi, thirsty parents, and so forth. While sharing her own stuff comes naturally to Lohan, she had to learn how to probe others. As she explained to Cosmopolitan, I still get nervous. I'm so used to being asked the questions, so it's very different for me to have to ask the questions. Usually, I know the person. I like to just keep it very lighthearted and very friendly because that's more interesting to me." While she seemed to take to the new skill fairly quickly, the series died out before long. In total, 12 episodes of The Lowdown saw release, all of which blared Lohan's early 2000s hit, Rumors, as their theme song. For years, Lohan was a hot commodity in Hollywood and for the better part of a decade, she had her pick of projects. Then, after her public image wavered, she went through a period where she could barely book a job. While this may have seemed like a sensible call to casting directors at the time, Lohan fans were understandably bummed to see a talented actor lose their ability to practice their craft. For reference, Lohan appeared in 10 feature films between 2003 and 2007, in addition to filming a few TV guest spots and launching a decently successful music career. Her next high-profile gig was the 2012 TV movie Liz and Dick. And after that, her career basically stopped dead. There were several extended periods where Lohan didn't work at all, the most notable of which was the roughly three-year gap between her appearance in the 2015 short 
Till Human Voices Wake Us and her several episode stint on Sick Note in 2018. I haven't really been around anything having to do with Hollywood in a long time. Like many of her peers, her acting career also hit something of a standstill when COVID-19 hit. But Lohan has since explained that this was by choice. She waited for the right project to come into her life at the right time, and eventually signed a two-picture deal with Netflix. The 2022 holiday film Falling for Christmas marked the beginning of Lohan's comeback, as she explained to Good Morning America, I wanted to make this movie because I missed being on set and I really missed bringing characters to life. And this was just the perfect script full of love and family and romance and joy all in one. Lohan has dealt with many haters over the years, but she has also managed to retain fans even in her darkest times. Her past co-stars seem particularly fond of the former child star, with many of them expressing positive sentiments about her decades after their first meeting. For instance, Lohan remains in touch with her Mean Girls co-star, Jonathan Bennett, who played her love interest Aaron Samuels in the film. She has also continued a relationship with her character's on-screen father from The Parent Trap, Dennis Quaid. As recently as 2022, Quaid fondly told People magazine, "'Well, I'll always talk to her. The Parent Trap will always be in our conversation, of course, whether we speak of it or not, because I'm kind of like her movie dad." One of Lohan's biggest supporters has been Jamie Lee Curtis, her character's mother in Freaky Friday. Where's my door? Privacy is a privilege, Anna. Where's my door, Mom? Curtis has defended Lohan for years and remained a champion of her talent. Speaking with People in 2022, Curtis expressed how glad she is to see Lohan happy. She acknowledged that she is very impressed by her former co-star's lighthearted nature and commended Lohan's public composure after half a lifetime spent being scrutinized in the media. Curtis must have enjoyed her time on set with Lohan, as Variety reports the Oscar winner has been pushing for a Freaky Friday sequel for years. In May 2023, the publication confirmed that the sequel was moving ahead at Disney and that both Lohan and Curtis were expected to sign on. For the most part, members of the Lohan family have always seemed to truly want what is best for their kin. This is particularly true of the four Lohan children, which include Lindsay's older brother Michael Jr. and her younger siblings Aliana and Dakota. Unlike Lindsay's mother Dina, her siblings have not courted media attention, and Michael Jr. is particularly private. We do know, however, that Lindsay is very close to all of them and that they see each other frequently despite living on different sides of the globe. In 2019, Lindsay told Variety that one of her brothers comes to visit her in Dubai every other month, and that her sister and mother are also consistent visitors. She also stated that she speaks to her family daily and flies back to New York to visit them fairly often. As recently as April 2023, Lindsay even managed to get her entire family together for a meal for the first time in seven years. A couple of months before that, she was at New York Fashion Week, sitting front row to support Aliana and Dakota as they modeled in Christian Siriano's show. Lohan's history with business ventures is not the strongest, but recently she's pivoted from entrepreneurship to working with already established brands. Making the most of her recent transition into motherhood, some of her latest partnerships came about as the result of her pregnancy. For example, since giving birth in July 2023, she has been hawking Freedom Mom postpartum underwear on social media. Additionally, Lohan has also begun work with Nestig, even taking an active role in designing products for the company. While she's helped design product lines for other companies in the past, now that she is on the baby train, she can draw inspiration from her own experience as a new mother. With Nestig, Lohan created a line of nursery products that her website says were created to evoke feelings of the beach. Lohan told Architectural Digest, I feel so peaceful by the ocean. I wanted to create a space where my little one and I could share in that feeling. In addition to Nestig, Lohan also signed on to work with Lavish Alice on an upcoming line of baby clothing. She previously worked with the British company in 2015, designing a 19-piece collection for adult women. So it will be interesting to see what comes of their new partnership nearly a decade later. If you or someone you know is having substance abuse issues, contact the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or call SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. 4357